that out. That's so good. It's kind of like a papaya juice. Our breakfasts are two dollars each, and look what we get with that. We're taking a jeep to Kokoro Valley. Lindsay is standing right there. All the way to the top. Good morning guys from Salento, Colombia. I just wanted to show you guys our Airbnb really quick, or at least show you the view from here. Look at this. So this Airbnb was 30 a night, so for both of us that's $15. We have our laundry around everywhere, but we have a full-size kitchen, and then it looks like we have a little dorm room here. So we have four beds, all to ourselves. Bathroom. So this is real travel life. Lindsay wants to show you guys the perfect version of our Airbnb, but right now we have laundry everywhere. And that's because you have to do that sometimes when you travel. We hung stuff outside. It wasn't drying quick enough inside, so I decided to let it dry in the sun. Next time we'll show you guys how we wash clothes in the sink. It's mm -hmm. really exciting stuff. And let's show you our little balcony. Really quick. Here's our neighbor. But look at this view. See, we're in the coffee region right now, so we're just surrounded by mountains and coffee plantations. Okay, so we're fueling up before our trip at this little cafe. And our breakfasts are two dollars each, and look what we get with that. So you pick an egg meal, like an omelette or huevos rancheros or something like that, and then you also get an arepa, toast, cheese, and a coffee or a hot chocolate with it. I like it. Hot. So on top of the breakfast she already had, Lindsay just got a crepe and it's huge. And this is only two dollars. And at home this would probably be seven, eight, or nine dollars. <laughs> I already had a whole breakfast and now I'm gonna eat this. But we are going on a really long hike later, so this will be good to stock up. Jeep to Kokoro Valley. So right now we're the only ones really in the Jeep, but pretty soon it's about to get packed probably because I saw all the other Jeeps were crammed full of people in these seats. So we're taking a Jeep to Kokoro Valley and it takes about half an hour. It costs a dollar each way. Hola. Hola. And it was pouring rain like about an hour ago and it's still kind of cloudy so hopefully the rain holds off. So this hike in Kakora Valley is supposed to be about five hours. So you should bring some food with you, but if you don't, there are a ton of little cafes, little coffee houses in these mountains along the way. And I'm running out of breath already because of the elevation.
Lindsay wants a horse again. She can't do this. <sighs> I think it's the elevation. And my legs are tired from the long horseback ride yesterday. Yeah. We were on the horses for like an hour, or four hours. Wow, look at this. So I'm really used to palm trees being from California, but the ones that I'm used to, they're probably about a third of this size. Look at this. <laughs> you can barely see the top. These palm trees can grow to about 180 feet tall. And they're surrounding us. It hurts my eyes to look at them. This place doesn't seem real. It's like out of a movie. It looks like Jurassic Park. Like, look at that, that way. These palms, like that tallest one over there, it's probably three or four times the size of a regular palm tree that you would see anywhere else in the world. It doesn't look real. Standing right here, it's like, it's hard to believe what you're looking at. All right, so we're taking a little break to take in the view and look at this, we're completely surrounded. So specifically in this area, at the beginning of the hike, you're just surrounded by the palms on all sides. So look at this, for miles. way back there all around us 360 degree view of these palms and it's cloudy so it's kind of hazy right at the top of the palms and it creates this cool vibe it's like it, it looks dreamy uh -huh. if you come here when it's cloudy and the fog coming in it's surreal yeah. it's so beautiful and if you do decide to come here make sure you bring a rain jacket or something warm mm -hmm. because while I've been here, I've already taken this off once or twice and needed to put it back on. It'll get super hot and then cold. Mm -hmm. Very sunny and then it'll rain. <laughs> so it's been cold, it's been hot, it's been warm, it's been rainy. We're just getting and it all here. We're just taking off sunglasses, putting them on, <laughs> putting on jackets, taking them off. So yeah, bring everything you have. Bring sunscreen, even if it's raining when you leave. And now it's windy all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> the wind just kicked up for the first time. Well, we hadn't had that yet, so of course we had to experience that. Yeah. Next stop, tornado. <laughs> Look how tall that is. Look. Look at this. Lindsay is standing right there. All the way to the top. All right, we've been here for about an hour. We took a little break to take in the view. And now we have another four hours. The problem is if we don't do the whole thing or close to it, we're not gonna get the hummingbirds in. And supposedly that's one of the coolest parts is when you see these hummingbirds on the second half. So, we'll hope see how we feel. Yeah, hopefully we get to it, but if not, these palms are quite enough for us. This is so pretty. I can't get over it. The little mist and the fog coming. You can't even see the tops of these because they're so tall and they're in the fog. Let's go through the grass this time, a lot more scenic. We're on our way back down. Yep, so how far do you think we got into the hike? <laughs> um, like halfway? No. We did not make it to the hummingbird house. That would have been like an extra at least two miles to hike. So we decided to head back down. We probably made it, what, a mile and a half into the trail? Mm hmm But we stopped a lot along the way to get really good views. Yeah, and it's not so much that we couldn't make the rest of the hike. Uh, a big part of it is that it keeps raining and also the fog is rolling in. Once you get high up here, 
it's all fog. And so if we weren't really gonna get them any views or anything, once we were up there, all we had was a trail and white <laughs> fog next to us. Like, was it really worth it to spend another two hours hiking? We didn't think so. Nope. I wish we could show you guys how vast this area is. Like here, I'm gonna turn in a little 360 right here. So look how open this is. There's just land for miles and just palms and open space all around us. First thing we're doing, getting fruit from the fruit stand. Yes, let's go. So our favorite restaurant in all of Colombia is not really a restaurant at all. <laughs> it's this fruit stand. So I've been wanting to get this juice for a while at these fruit stands. Look at that. It looks like it has mango, pineapple, banana, maybe guava. Kind of look like it had guava. Papaya. And it comes with a spoon. Mmm, papaya. Let's try it. It's like a fruit cup. Comes with a spoon, so you get mm, that juice in there with the fruit. That's so good. It's kind of like a papaya juice that all of these fruits are in. What? I thought so too. Lindsay got a base on the wine. taste? I'm in love with it. It's so refreshing and it's not too sweet. And it's just perfect. What's up guys? Now it's time for Q&A. All right, first question we have is from Claus Idrago. Says, incredible view of the mountains. What percent of the people living in the mountains speaks Quechua? Love your adventure. Probably 100%. <laughs> Probably a lot of them. I don't think we've met anyone that lives in the mountains that doesn't speak Quechua as their primary language. Some of them don't even know Spanish, but Quechua is what they speak. So it's pretty interesting. A lot of the people that speak Quechua, they don't even speak Spanish, so they can't even speak with a lot of the people that live like within the cities. They're very traditional people and they continue speaking their language, which is very cool. Yeah, and then as far as people that are actually living in the city and the town, some of them know a little bit of Quechua, but I would say most of them are not fluent in it. Next question comes from Mark Keller. At this point in your Peruvian adventure, can you pick a favorite moment? That's a tough question. I'll mm -hmm. go first and then I'll let Alex answer. Uh, so I feel like a lot of people would think that a favorite moment would be a place or a view. But for me, honestly, it was finding Mr. Potato Head, which is a stray dog we took in from Cusco. And when we found him a new home and met his new owners, they are incredible people and we've grown really close with them. And so that is probably the best memory, uh, best relationship we formed that I will take away from this trip. But we've had a lot of beautiful moments as far as like nature and cultural experiences, so maybe you can give one of those. Yeah, mine was also that same answer, <laughs> but I'd say some of the moments that we had where nobody else was around, it was just us at these places where typically there would be a ton of mm -hmm. tourists. So for example, Saxe Woman, when we had the place all to ourselves, that was amazing. And then Maras Salt Mines, mm -hmm. that place, it was just us yet again. Next question comes from Simona Charai. Says, when will you guys release more Columbia videos? That's a great question. We wanted to touch on this. We've been talking about when we're going to release them. <clears throat> and 
Yeah, so we went to Colombia right before Peru, and I was editing those videos when lockdown first happened. But once lockdown happened, we wanted to release videos current mm -hmm. as lockdown was happening, as the current events were happening, so we thought that would be better to release those on time. And it just continued with our story every day of what we were doing, and we thought throwing in the Colombia videos just wouldn't work. So, yeah. Once this whole situation is done, then we will release the Columbia videos and the other Peru videos because there are probably five or six that we have to release from before lockdown started. Yeah, and they are amazing videos because we saw really cool places, so make sure you don't miss those. And yeah, I think that's all we have for Q&A for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Click the like button. It helps us out a lot. Leave a comment below with a question if you would like your question answered in a future Q&A. Just write Q&A and then the question. And remember that we changed our schedule slightly for our videos. We're now releasing on Monday, Wednesday, and, and Saturday. Saturday. So we skip a little day there. All right. So subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.